Almighty God, we serve. God is wonderful. Our God is gracious and wonderful indeed. Serve him in truth, and he will be wonderful at all times in your life. Today, we are going to read Exodus 15, verse 9 and verse 10. Exodus 15, 9 and 10. The enemy said, I'll pursue, I'll overtake, I'll divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind. Your sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. The postulations of the enemy, the boastings of the enemy. You know how many people I have killed? I'll deal with you. You know this and this and this I have done. You don't know who I am. You see what I am going to do to you. And the fact is he has done those things. At the point the children of Israel were going to go to war, and the Assyrian representative came and said, have you seen how many countries my master had led west? True. And he mentioned the very large countries, far larger than Israel. And what was he saying? Who are you? So tiny, I'm going to deal with you in no time. He didn't bargain with the presence of God. And that's what happens in this scripture that we just read. The Egyptians saw the Jews, very few in number that lived amongst them, and knew that they can't stand against them. They didn't even have weapons of war, nothing. They can't fight. We can take care of them. You don't know us. We'll do everything. We'll do, you see the boasting? But you know what the scripture says? Who decrees a thing and it comes to pass, except the Lord himself has said it. What has God said about your life? Did God say that that enemy will destroy you? Did God say that those people will be able to overthrow you, to have any effect upon your life? If he didn't say it, then it's not going to happen. Is God by you? That is what is important. Is God with you? Is God in you? Either of three positions, anyhow. Has God called you to himself? Has God chosen you for his own? If he has, no matter what the enemy tries to say or to do, all the intimidation is useless. It will come to nothing. The army came and surrounded Israel, and they were ready to buzz. You know what message the prophet told the king of Israel? He said, they will not step a foot in this land. Never mind how many they are, and they were plenty. As the scripture describes them, he said they were like the sands on the seashore. And they, not one of them stepped a foot. They heard a rumor and took off. Where we read now, the children of Egypt, they selected the best of the best of the army, the most ferocious. Pharaoh personally selected the ones to pursue the children of Israel and destroy them. But were they able to do anything? Nothing. Because when the Lord has not supported a curse, no enemy can destroy you. And there is nothing that can happen against you except God said yes. Who is the enemy that can wake up on his own and say, I'm going to do it and succeeds? No. God is in control of everything about life. So relax. You know what Jesus said? Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That is to say, if you are focused on God, what is there to trouble you? There are so many things that will happen in this world. Like you said, in the world you see diverse kinds of troubles, but don't be troubled by them. You see all sorts of enmities, don't be troubled by them. You see all sorts of adversities by men, by demons, by situations, by circumstances, by, by even the ordinary movement of natural things. Whatever they are, whoever they are, let not your heart be troubled. Be of good cheer. Jesus said, I have overcome the world for you. So be of good cheer, child of God. Whatever it is that is against you, hand it over to God. Let your mind be in peace. It's very easy to say. You say, yes, preacher, you are saying it as a preacher. I'm also a human being. And we all pass through diverse kinds of things. 
But if you were able to focus your heart on God, he takes care of that situation. That one that you don't know what to do about. He knows how to do it. That thing that is almost taking you away will not succeed in taking you because God knows how to change that situation in the twinkling of an eye. You're almost there. Or you're already in it. God knows how to take you out of that situation promptly and he will do it immediately for you. I like to read Hebrews chapter 13. I am reading verse 5 and verse 6. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? What indeed can anybody do to you? Is God your helper indeed? Nothing. It does not matter how ferocious the person is. It does not matter how powerful he is. It doesn't matter whatever he or she has been able to do to others. You have no reason to fear. That your helper, God himself, has distinguished you from the sword of the enemy, has separated you from the achievements of the enemy. He will not have a boast over your life. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your deliverance has come upon your children. We have diverse situations and different kinds of things that are facing us. And Lord, for everyone, let the solution be now. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.